Yay! Hello everybody. My name is Nadia and today I'm going to share with you guys that I will be starting a series of 10 videos that is on mathematics. Very, very basic mathematics. The purpose of uh, these videos is actually to make mathematics easier for moms. Kids, if uh, they want to learn from my videos, they can also do that. But this is mainly spoken to, this is mainly addressed to the moms. Because when it comes to homeschooling, and nowadays because of the pandemic, we have to do forced homeschooling. So uh, people, moms, parents, they are very much concerned that if the kids are not, kids cannot go out to play in the gardens, to play in the parks, to you know, play outside in the street. They cannot go out socialize then they are like uh, stuck at home and how can for three weeks for four weeks maybe or for um, they don't know for how much for how long they're gonna stay uh, in the houses so in the meantime they should not miss anything in the mathematics and the science and the English so they are trying to do anything that they can do so this is just an effort to uh, help those moms who think mathematics is not something that they can't teach. Mathematics, I don't know why, has been made so difficult. It's just our thinking. It's just how we think mathematics is difficult. It is not. That's, well, that's why I want to make these videos to show you guys that it is not. <sighs> So you guys can learn with me the way I learned these things. They are super easy. And I was amazed when I started teaching my own daughter and I figured out that mathematics is my favorite subject. Have a good day. Bye. So our first lesson is going to be about numbers. Let's get started. Let's get started with numbers. Numbers are the building blocks or the ABCs of mathematical language. So let's take just very, very basic numbers very early. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine this is the advanced form of numbers that we can see that we use now earlier human beings very early human beings used to count like this maybe with sticks and things they used to count the things which were there in the nature that they could see like one sun one moon, two trees maybe, or three bags of wheat. Because their survival was so much connected to the nature, so it was important for them to keep a stock of the things that they have, to count them. The number was important at that time for them. Nature, everything that was in the nature that was countable, they used to count it with one, two, three, like this. And then, very later in the history, this number zero was introduced by the Indians. And this was to represent anything which was nothing. If there is nothing, then it's number zero in mathematics. So when number zero was added to this line, I mean, this is not ending at nine. This is going on and on to infinity. So this number zero was invented, and this showed... There is nothing. 
And this number when it came, the set became the whole numbers. We had another number added to the existing numbers and the natural numbers became the whole numbers. I'm not saying that the number before the number zero was added, uh, the counting was just till nine. It used to be 10, 11, 12, but not the way we write it today. As you might know, how the Romans used to like ten, write 10. This was how they used to write 10, right? So, natural numbers and then whole numbers. Let's see, the numbers you can see everywhere around you. Let's take any number out of these numbers. Let's say we take the number four. Look at this number. Look at it closely. What do you see? I tell you, I see a positive sign with this number four. And I see positive signs with all these numbers obviously except for zero because it's nothing so I can see a positive sign here I can also see a decimal point here if I look even closer I can see a fraction here and upon looking even closer, I can see an exponent here, a power, 4 raised to power 1 is 4. What is this? This is one way of looking at things, and this is another. This number 4, let me tell you. This is also number four. Oh. And this is also number four. This is also number four. This is also number four. So this is just another way of saying number four. So now, what is the use of all these things? Let me tell you. Let's see, we are given a sum like this. Uh, like this. Now we can see 4 is positive, 16 is negative. What about 5? It is when we know it is positive. It just takes out its positive sign when it's required, when it's needed. Just like that, you have 3.49 added to 5. <laughs> Only then you could see the decimal will appear and also would take a shape like this that would just match the other member. And you could do it just like that. Points matching in the same places and the other members will go in the same places. That's how you would solve it. You can either add it or subtract it. Now, we have something like this, 3 over 5 minus 8. Now, one is fraction and the other one is a number. This number is actually a fraction. Just like transformers, they just transform themselves to fit in the situation. And the same way, you have 
5 raised to the power 2 into 5 raised to the power 3 into 5, what would you do? Yo, you got the exponent. That's how they go. So, so easy. 1, 5, and you would add all these, and that's your answer. Isn't it simple? <laughs> now, the other kind of numbers. The numbers, even. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 is divided by 2. Yeah. All the numbers which are divided by 2 are even numbers. Odd. 1, 2, 3. 3, not divided by 2. It's not divisible by 2, right? So all the numbers which cannot be divided by 2 are the odd numbers. Then comes... Okay, now comes the difficult part. It's not that difficult, please. Any number, let's say we're going to take the number... 2. Any number is an integer, obviously. If it's not having the negative mark with it, it is positive integer. Any integer. This is an integer, see? The numbers which have positive or negative signs, including zero, they're all integers. And any integer you see here, if it's not having, it's not carrying a sign, it is carrying a positive sign. So now, any number or any integer in a lengthy language, in, in you say in a complicated way, is a fraction, as I told you earlier. Now this integer too is a fraction. You can see that. So any number, any integer that can be written in the form of a fraction is called a rational number. Oopsie doopsie. It's called a rational number. Okay? Now, you can take this word out of this rational ratio. What is a ratio? Ratio is a fancy way of calling dividing. Ratio is division. Ratio is fraction. What a fraction has, which other numbers does not. A fraction has this line, per line, two by one line. This line means division. This division is called ratio in a fancy language. So any number or any integer that can be written in the form of a fraction is a rational number. Now you would see that all the numbers that are fractions, they are also decimals. So, this two would go inside, this one would be outside. This is going to have one, one, one twos are two. So this 2 is going to be our, un our answer, 2.0, 2 2.0. This can be written like this, 2.0. Now this number, let's say, we say that change this number to a fraction. Let's say 9 over 4, change it to a fraction. 9 is the numerator will go inside, the denominator will go outside, with outside, and 281.028. Now 2, 0, that would be 5. So this was a fraction in the first place. This was a rational number in the first place and we changed it to a decimal. So 
every number is an integer and every integer and every number is a fraction and every fraction is a decimal so all these are the rational numbers now what is not irrational what is not rational is irrational that irrational is also a decimal that irrational is also a fraction like the famous one this is the pi 22 by 7 can you see this number can be written as a fraction and this number goes on to be written as a decimal like 3.1415 and on and on and on and on and on and there are people there are some people who have spent their whole lives trying to end this number but this number is unstoppable when you are facing a decimal when you are being given a decimal which is not stopping and which is not repeating That is an irrational number. See? There is no confusion at all. Rational numbers do include the decimals, but the irrational ones are the ones, those who have no, no one can stop them. They are just going on and on and on and they are not even repeating themselves. Let's say you have two by three. When you put the two inside, three outside, then you use zero point, and then you go like 18, and then you have two, then zero, and it goes on, 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 and on. It is not stopping, but can you see? It is repeating. So this 0 0.66666 in its decimal form and this 2 by 3 in its fractional form is not an irrational number. It is not stopping, but it has a pattern which is repeating. That's why it's a rational number. I hope I made it clear. <laughs> so that's it. Rational numbers and irrational numbers and all the numbers. Like, I mean, rational numbers have all the numbers in them, and those all the numbers which are not coming in rational numbers are the irrational numbers. The famous ones are the pi. This is Miss Pi. And the other one is these underscore two type things. These are the famous irrational numbers, those which don't, do not stop and which do not repeat. So, yeah, when you combine rational and irrational numbers, they become real numbers, and then there are complex numbers, and the things goes on and on and on. But the level where we are, the simple level we're talking about, is going to have only these.